Good evening. A lot of people have contacted me over the last couple of weeks asking me for my thoughts or most of them just saying, have they heard of this and sending me links to the story. And uh, yeah, I had heard of it. A bunch of people had sent it to me as well. And uh, so what's going on is Casey Hathaway, a couple of weeks ago, a three-year-old boy, doesn't say if he's closer to three or closer to four, uh, but we'll say three years old. Um, this hits home for me because I have a two and a half year old daughter and, uh, I guess he was playing in his backyard at his grandma's house with some other kids and he went missing. So Casey Hathaway, age three, reported missing from his grandmother's house in Taller Word, Ernal, North Carolina at, uh, 1.45 PM Tuesday, January 22nd. Casey was playing outside the yard with two children and, dis- and was discovered missing when the other children came inside and Casey was nowhere to be found. They searched the rural wooded area for for 45 minutes and called police. Casey couldn't be located. He is about three feet tall, strawberry blonde hair. So why this is fascinating is fortunately he was found. And I'm so grateful for these parents, the family, the grandmother, everybody in the community. Um, So grateful he was found. I guess it was down into 20 degrees. He was missing uh, for a couple of days, I guess, in 20 degree weather with cold winds. I mean, you'd have an adult hard press not die of, of hypothermia out there. And uh, I guess he survived and luckily was found. Uh, but what was really odd is that the three-year-old boy um, said that a bear watched over him. And this struck a lot of people's um, interest is anybody who knows wildlife knows that bears generally aren't nice to people. I mean, you have a trained one that's your pet or something like that. It can be generally nice, but still not trusted. A wild bear would probably just assume eat a person, probably more than likely run away from a person, a black bear anyway. Um, so a number of people have said, well, you think it was maybe a Bigfoot. And if you're familiar with some of the Bob Garrett encounters, some of the other encounters of hikers and missing people and people who have bumped their head or crashed on their bike, there's lots of stories of Bigfoot helping them out, helping them out in wildfires, helping Uh, The Kid Stuck in Mud that was on Sasquatch Chronicles. There's lots of examples of these things for one reason or another helping people. And that maybe the theory is that he didn't know what else to call this big hairy creature, so he called it a bear. So let's talk about that a bit tonight. So before we get too deep into the Bigfoot hypothesis on this story and start dissecting that, let's just take a look at the habitat and the range. Um... I think it's pretty curious. There's a lot of good thick forest there, lots of vast forest land in North Carolina, lots of cities as well. And there also seems to be a whole lot of um, country, which you consider farms and, uh, you know, plantations and livestock areas and growing stations um, abutted to patches of woods, patches of forest. Some of these woods go way back and connect to bigger areas. And, uh, When you take a look at North Carolina, it actually has a really fair amount of Sasquatch encounters. Now, this is from the BFRO website. Say what you want about the BFRO. They do a good job with the uh, of documenting the reports that they get. Um, So it says here 96 for North Carolina. Uh, I looked a particular county didn't really have any, um, which doesn't mean anything uh, because I'd say like it's probably less than one percent of all the Bigfoot encounters are actually reported to the BFRO. Uh, they're pretty good about tracking what they get and writing it down, uh, but you know a lot of people see something and never report it. So it's a good place to start. And uh, so yeah, I think that the area has a long history of Sasquatch encounters. They're very classically known to be there. Uh, you know, North Carolina is as good a place as any, especially in the woods and farmlands. I think the Sasquatch would probably do pretty well in farmlands where they could steal produce, they could steal livestock, uh, they can move in and out of these woods and use them like um, highways to, you know, skip around through farms and they could use drainage ditches. Mixed farmlands actually a really good place for a Sasquatch because you think that they have food, they have livestock, they have water supplies, uh, they have people that they can, you know, generally the people are spread out. Um, So yeah, I think it sounds like a pretty good habitat for a Sasquatch to me. So one thing when you talk about the Bigfoot hypothesis in this story is you have to understand the boy never said Bigfoot or Sasquatch. He said, a bear kept me warm, a bear took care of me. And all the news media kind of just left it at that and dismissed it as a boy's imagination. Um, Some people even said that maybe he encountered a dog or something. Um, 
or maybe a very homeless man. A, a bear is a long way from a homeless man. Uh, so my daughter being two and a half knows who Bigfoot is, um, only because she's my daughter and I'm into Bigfoot. I think the average kid at three, maybe, uh, and my daughter has a couple Bigfoot books, uh, but the average kid who doesn't have a weirdo parent like me who's not in who is not into it uh, probably wouldn't know who Bigfoot was. And especially if you're not in the Pacific Northwest or in the West Coast or an area that's typically thought of for Bigfoot, uh, your kid at three probably not going to know who it is. Um, I've met six and seven year old kids that you mentioned Bigfoot and they're not really sure what it is or they haven't heard about it. Uh, and other kids know. So we we'll just assume at three years old, he doesn't know what Bigfoot is. So if you encounter something big and hairy in the woods from the stories that he knows, he probably knows what a deer is. He probably knows what a bear is. Uh, might know what a raccoon or a squirrel is, but when we see something big and hairy in the woods, uh, he's probably going to think of it as a bear. And I know there are bears out there in that area, um, but I just don't believe that it was a bear. It's, to me, if you don't believe in Sasquatch, then you're, you're going to come up with something else. But on this channel here, I know they exist. A lot of people here know they exist, and you're here for Sasquatch content. So we'll say for all intents and purposes, Bigfoot exists. Um, I know they do. People can deny it, and that's fine. People can believe whatever they want to believe. I just don't think it was a bear. I think there's a really good chance that it was a Sasquatch. Either this boy wandered off, and the Sasquatch found him later on after he was scared or crying or whining and kept him warm because he knew that if this kid went missing or dead, people would come looking for him. Or it could have been even an, Al an Albert Osman type encounter where... The boy was abducted by the Bigfoot for whatever reason, for company, whatever, and then went, uh-oh, there's a lot of people going to come missing for this thing, or this thing's noisy, or a lot of trouble, or I don't have the resources to take care of a small human boy, and gave him back, or he provided him shelter, or somebody else, or something else abducted this kid, and a Sasquatch came across him. We don't know. But uh, I do honestly think that it was probably a Sasquatch that kept this kid warm, that brought him in, that protected him. Um, I'd love to talk to the boy. I've looked for a few other stories, and they don't really elaborate too much. Obviously, I'm not going to fly to the other side of the country and knock on somebody's door randomly and ask to talk to their three-year-old about what happened to them and already a traumatic experience. But I would definitely love to know more information about this story and exactly what the boy saw and what he described. Because like I said, uh, my daughter's two and a half and she she can be pretty descriptive. I mean, she's still, you know, putting sentences together. When you make a jump from two to three, they get a lot more articulate. And um, it'd be really interesting to hear what, what, what he had to say and how he described it in his words. And like I said, I think bear, that's always a thing is, you know, oh, you didn't see Sasquatch, you saw a bear. You know, that's always, it's a big North American mammal that's everywhere and always the go-to for Bigfoot is a bear anyway. So it makes a lot of sense that in this kid's mind, that's what he saw or the only thing he could think of. So briefly, I wanted to hit on the missing 411 topic. Um, from North Carolina where this is, there's nothing where this county is kind of lower down. There isn't really a lot going on. You got to go pretty far west of where this is before you really start hitting a lot of... Uh, hot spots or encounters, but these really, these missing 411 cases happen all over. Um, I think this was kind of heading towards the potential of it. Uh, but anyway, why I bring it up is David Plotties doesn't talk about it a lot, but I remember in some of his early episodes, some of his early interviews, like 10, 15 years ago, when I first heard him on Coast to Coast, he would talk about how, you know, very rarely do they ever find a victim, and when they find a victim, they're almost always deceased. And every once in a blue moon, out of a couple hundred cases, do they actually find the person alive. And out of a lot of the cases that are found alive even, it's somebody who... Um, is mentally handicapped or is blacked out and doesn't remember it. But in a very few select cases out of the hundreds of missing 411 cases uh, with children and stuff, there was a couple of counts, I believe one or two, where the child described as a dog person took me or a dog man type creature took me. Now, it's no secret all over the South, these dogman creatures, even weirder than Bigfoot, are being seen out there. People report them. It's a phenomenon. It's all over the Internet. And they're generally described as being very ferocious, very dangerous, big fangs, nothing good to be said about them. But there's a very small but loyal crowd of people out there who insist that the dogman can be good, that they're... Uh, 
some kind of protector of the woods, kind of like people refer to Bigfoot as a protector in the woods, but even more ferocious, and that they're scary, but they really don't harm humans. And that's a bit of a stretch. Uh, the whole the whole dogman thing's a bit of a stretch. I mean, I think people are really seeing something, and I think there is something to that mystery, and we've talked about it quite a bit on this channel. Uh, but could have a dogman have taken this creature, or he could have it encountered it? And that could be a little more closely described as a bear. I mean, a bear looks, a dog man looks a lot more like a bear than a Bigfoot does. Uh, so anyway, this whole thing's fascinating. If I get more information, I'll update you guys. I'm going to leave a link in the uh, description below to an article. Now, there's a bunch of articles about these out there. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comment. And please stay safe in the woods and watch your kids out there. Uh, thank you very much.